Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. In the early days of filming wildlife, as you'll see tonight, researchers had to capture animals in order to observe and learn from them. But that's no longer the case today. Modern technologies such as drones and satellite tracking offer new ways to study animals in their natural habitat with less intrusion from human touch. Wild Kingdom set the gold standard for nature programming and introduced generations of young people to the wonders of the natural world. Fortunately, the successful research that began with our original series helped many animals make a comeback from the threat of extinction. And that's good news for the Wild Kingdom. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha, the people who pay. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, in parts of India where not so many years ago the magnificent Bengal tiger was abundant, it is now in serious danger of extinction. Because of great land utilization, the remaining tiger population has become isolated into small pockets of family groups. Such isolation causes inbreeding, and the resultant offspring of this great cat are weaker and less resistant to disease. To help prevent such inbreeding and the possibility of extinction through epidemics, professional government trappers are capturing adult tigers and relocating them. Recently, Tom Allen and I were invited to observe such a trapping team at work. Capturing a live, full-grown tiger in a net isn't easy. When a tiger comes to the bait, the net edges are raised to form a huge sack. Then, things get exciting and sometimes dangerous. The tigers were also killing native livestock, and that's why the villagers were as eager as Tom and I to assist in the tiger capture here in the southern part of India. Our drive down this narrow jungle road has lasted for over an hour. But now we're just reaching the area where we'll have to leave the jeep in favor of a more primitive mode of transportation. From this point on, Tom and I will ride elephants. No matter how many times you've done it, getting up on an elephant's back is never simple. We're several miles or more from where the Tiger Drive will begin, and it'll take some time to get there, since our cruising speed's only about three miles an hour. These are some of the native cattle that are being preyed upon by one tiger in particular in this area, and he's the one we're hoping to catch. Once a tiger learns how much easier it is to catch and kill domestic livestock rather than deer or other wild animals, his attacks on the native herds become more frequent. The underbrush is not so thick here and we're beginning to see some wildlife. Up ahead is a group of langur monkeys. It seems to be a family group. They're the most common monkey in this jungle, and we'll probably see a lot more of them. The beaters are waiting for us ahead, so we'd better move on. Only one small family of tigers remains in this particular area, so the likelihood that we'll see a tiger while riding along is rather remote.
We've reached our destination. Tom and I will dismount here. It's only a short walk to where the beaters are gathered together. Coming to greet us is the chief government trapper of this district, Patrick Dos Santos. He's trapped many tigers, and I'm to ride behind with him while Tom walks along with the native beaters. As soon as they flush the tiger that's been marauding in this area, Patrick and I will return here for the nets. Patrick says it's time to get on our elephants and follow the beaters. While Marlin's with Patrick, I'll accompany Bal Chander Naidu, who's in charge of these beaters. Bal Chander says it's time to move the beaters into position for the drive. He tells me that Tiger was last seen in this area. If he's still here, our noise will flush him and we'll be able to pinpoint his location. With Marlon and Patrick falling in behind, it's time for the drive to begin. With a racket like this in the jungle, I imagine we'll be flushing more than just a tiger. As a matter of fact, we've already disturbed a colony of large fruit bats. There go some native spotted deer. They're also called cheetahs. Cheetahs are the normal prey of tigers, and since they're around, maybe the tigers here too. Patrick is less optimistic about our chances now. We've already passed the place where the tiger was seen yesterday. We'll keep the drive going for a while though and maybe our luck will change. There's something I've been hoping to see, almost hidden under this log. It's a common Indian python, about half grown. Balchander says a full grown python like this will be over 22 feet long and weigh about 250 pounds. They'll sometimes kill chickens and dogs, but they're not particularly dangerous to humans. We had hoped to flush a tiger into this clearing, but we're unlucky. The drive seems to have failed so far. As Balchander keeps the beaters moving, I'll join Marlin and Patrick. We'll scout farther ahead. We're going to need the luck Balchander wishes us. Our luck in locating the tiger we were after changed for the better very soon. Out of hearing of the beaters now, we're suddenly met with the news that a tiger's been spotted. The man who's guiding us says it's not too far away. I hope he doesn't get too far ahead of us. Our guide has led us to the man and boy who were first to spot the tiger. They've been keeping it in sight from a distance ever since. Patrick questions them and learns that the tiger has killed a calf several hundred yards from here. By stretching, I can just barely see the cat. Binoculars will help. He's a big one.
It looks as if he's hardly touched the calf he's killed, and he's acting rather nervous. Even though he hasn't seen us, he seems to be aware that something isn't right. He's cautious and will probably continue guarding his kill, but from a hidden position. Our problem is simplified now that we've located the tiger at a kill. While Tom stays here to start work on the tree platform, or Mashan, Patrick and I will return to camp and get the capture nets. We'll need a tree with not too many leaves, so the visibility will be good. The lookouts who first spotted the tiger will help in cutting and carrying bamboo for the Mashan. We'll build the observation platform in this tree. The Mashan can be built high enough here to see over to the kill where the trap will be set. While the workers get the bamboo at a nearby clump and chop it into proper lengths, I'll test the branches. Here come the first sections of bamboo now. The beaters are getting closer. There they are. Their noise will help protect us while we set the trap. I'd better check on how the tiger's reacting to it. Good. It's just like Patrick figured. He doesn't like it at all, and he's moving off. There's little likelihood he'll come back until after the beaters quit, but we'll have to work fast. While the men go on working, I'll walk over to meet Marlin, who's just arriving. As soon as we've unloaded this capture equipment, I'll rejoin Patrick to ready the cage. There may not be much time. As soon as all the chopping and beater noises stop, the tiger's sure to return to his kill. Hopefully, we'll be ready. It's a strange feeling being this close to a tiger's kill, knowing the cat's not too far away. But we're lucky those langurs are staying close by. They'll shriek a warning if they see a tiger coming this way. With these professional trappers to help us, we'll soon have the net set and anchored on the spot where the calf was killed. By that time, the men we left working on the Mishan should have it completed and ready for use. The net has to be anchored very firmly with stakes to prevent the tiger, when caught, from carrying the net into the brush with his struggles. If that happened, the element of danger to the men would be sharply increased. These bamboo struts will provide a fulcrum for raising the net high enough to cover the tiger completely when the trigger rope is pulled. The beaters must be nearly to the end of their drive now. Once they quit making their noises, we'll have to be ready to move away from here quickly. Poles are needed to pin the tiger down once he's netted. A quick release device will serve as a connector to the trigger rope.
We'll try to place the calf as close as possible to the position it was in when the tiger left it. Stakes will hold the carcass firmly so the tiger won't carry it off. The beaters have ended their drive. The tiger could return any time now. The trap is set. It's time to get things picked up and get out of sight. Everything's ready for the tiger. The work on the Mashan is completed too, and from above, I'll have a good view of the trap and the expected approach path of the tiger. The head trapper's blind near the trap is almost ready. He'll be the one to pull the rope trigger when the tiger's in the right position. Now comes the hardest part, the waiting. It was a long wait for Tom in the Mashan. He kept in touch with me on the walkie-talkie. Every quarter hour, Tom called us. But after two hours, the tiger had still not returned. We have the cage all ready and loaded aboard an ox cart. Tom says he'll continue watching for the big cat. So we'll start now to move in closer. That way, when we net the tiger, it will only take minutes to move the strong cage onto the scene. For any kind of wheeled device, jungle travel is all but impossible. Trees that have died and fallen or been knocked over by wild elephants are frequently encountered across the paths. Without the strength of our Maut's well-trained elephant, even the small cart carrying the cage could not find a passage. It's a good thing we started moving to the capture site early. There would have been no way to hurry with all this fallen timber blocking our way. With his instinctive ability, our elephant finds the exact balance point in order to lift and carry a big tree like this on his tusks. That's another major obstruction taken care of, and the path ahead of us seemed clear enough for the cart to follow without any further delays. There's no sign of the tiger yet. We've been seeing a few birds flitting around and the ever-present langur monkeys, but no indication of our quarry. But finally, there's a movement. There he is. He should be breaking into the clearing soon. He's returning to the kill. I'll alert Marlin to be all set to move in. He's taking his time. Now our trapper sees him. It's a dangerous moment because a shift in the breeze could alert the tiger that there's a human nearby. In that case, the tiger might flee 
or he might decide to attack. Last word to Marlin. The tiger's on the net. The frenzied tiger tears himself loose, we'll have to hurry and get him pinned down. This big cat is incredible. It's all we can do to hold him down. From the sound of those struggles, Tom and the trappers must really be having a difficult time with that tiger. The trapper will tell the cage man to move in here fast. It's the tiger we were after. The tiger's unharmed and it's been a perfect capture. The cage will be here in a few minutes and once we get him loaded, he'll be on his way to a new home in a less inhabited jungle. There he'll establish a stronger breeding strain. There also he will no longer pose a threat to the livestock and people in this part of India. Our tiger capture was a distinct success. As soon as he was transferred from the net to the cage, he was transported to a jungle area quite remote from human habitation. There in time, he will breed with a female from a different family group and produce a strain of cubs that are better able to fend for themselves and resist diseases. Most importantly, an endangered species is now getting a better chance for survival. Tigers that were once destroyed as threats to man and livestock are now given a second chance to resume their lives in a remote jungle of the wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, the people who pay, has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, helping people find Medicare solutions for over 50 years. To learn more about plan options or how to protect your kingdom, contact us today. Mutual of Omaha, protect your kingdom.